Hello, we got DRG versus Tyloo today. Uh, DRG have already made playoffs, Tyloo can't, but still when it comes to champions and making the playoffs for that, it's still important for Tyloo to be winning games like this. Going going 2 and 3 not making playoffs, it's doable. 3 and 3 making playoffs, a little bit more tricky for DRG. And DRG make first seed if they win an EDG lose, I'm pretty sure, yeah. And also, I think the map pull is a good test for DRG too. And we don't see, like, we've got Breeze later and then we've got Split. I haven't really seen Tyloo play Breeze at all this stage. And for Split, uh, DRG's results aren't necessarily not being the best. Uh, anyway, sorry, I'm going to close the blind a little bit because I can't really see the map that much. Well, plan comes in for DRG, 4 versus 4. Nyx gone down so there's no flashes. Vukashu trying to fight, use his cage. Really good uh, defensive flash from Ice King. As this fight comes in, he flashes to stop DRG from like doing something else and making a play. You've got the Brim. Watching here, like you want to be scaling up as soon as possible, really. Now this is good. Full focus is towards the site for these two players. So one flanking behind. Oh, I can't get the kill because TZH's position is a little bit too good. And it's suddenly it's a one versus one. Yeah, time is getting really low for Tyloo. Don't have it. I need to turn the game up a little bit more because I couldn't really hear it. So how long has he got left on it? Well, I think throughout that, Tyloo had the advantage. Like this flank, maybe could have got more. Yeah, I think like you, you want almost like a CS timer to go down. But we're seeing less of a post plant meta at least, because the worst situations are when you're watching a Viper, like say here with snake bite lineups for here. You can't see how long is left, or you can't hear how long is left either. All right, so they got the camera in here, the Viper over across in showers, and two here, which just pretty much no buy up at all for these guys. I'm like just sat in dirt, so I just realized. That's a bit better. I mean, at this point, I'm just a bit numb to Tyloo now. Like, I'm not feeling as flamey as I have done in the past, that's for sure. I mean, this is looking as flawless as a bonus as you can get. Alright, nice shots from Luke. Good start. So yeah, they said in the interview that Luke actually translates a lot for Vukashu from Mandarin into English, which is cool. It's good that they have players that can do that. But the fact that it's Luke doing it is a little bit surprising and a little bit concerning because Luke is the duelist. He has enough to be thinking about before he's translating for uh, Vukashu. But also, I guess it's nice in a sense because it you you know that your duelist is clued in on what the, the plan is. I think if there's any role on a team that's going to forget what the uh, call was, what the general plan of the round was, it's the duelist. So... Just getting Luke to repeat it to somebody else shows that, all right, you 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 just told Vukashi that we're going for like a fast B execute. Why did you hang around A too long? Etc. 
A better example, we said that we were going to like fake pressure towards B and then go A. Why did you just go in on B? Luke can't say that he wasn't listening, right? Because he has to listen to the call and then tell Vukashi about it. And anyway, yeah, you've sort of semi-inserted the raise here with a marshal. Putting some pressure here, you've put a trip across, expecting some form of like shower crunch. The duelist is the first one dead taking fights so that can translate while dead, yeah. I mean, you don't really want to be translating like that, really. I think Vukashi would prefer people to call him Mandarin and he just works out what the main calls are. But yeah, it's a good point. I think naturally you'd assume that you'd want the IGL to be translating, but at the same time, like, they've got stuff to think about too. Nice cages for Vukashi to get out. The plant's going to come in and not really be contested. Yeah, I think playing Cypher on this map is starting to look a little bit a little bit old so you fought here you've backed off your post point lineups good shot from ice king barely saw him and then get vukashi straight afterwards fighting free there molly's been used by tzh he's adjusted again i think he's shown himself here now they're going to sort of expect him towards yeah i mean great shots from by Aaron. gets very close timing wise and it was a little bit messy from drg just moving around but they're on a bonus right so getting the plant and getting free kills is still pretty good for them was the four versus three that drg ended up losing yeah Aaron and ice king get some crazy shots there uh, camera across. I don't know how much I like doing the... You got the trip here too, which has been spotted, but it hasn't been broken. Yeah, Vukashi's not afraid to battle up. I mean, this is a great battle. Battle of the Cyphers. One camera's still up. You know, trip this across here, trip this across there. Bit of a stalemate at the moment. But I was going to say, like, I don't know if I like doing this camera when you don't have the Fnatic wall that, like, goes through the TP. Yeah, I guess it depends on, yeah, like, stuff like this. If Flexen's going to be the one playing with a judge and hooker and stuff, it makes sense to put him towards B. Otherwise, swapping the Viper for the Brim is... Feels stronger. That wants to be the switch around too, I think. The very execute. I think it was quite a deep trip that was broken anyhow. The trip here was broken as well. The lurk up. Camera's reset. It's been up on top of this wall. It's been broken. Uh, Aaron's just doing crazy. Good fights. HFMI, like, cutting in two across with his cages. Really nice triple kill from him. I mean, why would you ever take him off the Sentinel? It just seems to be so well suited for him. But also, I do think that, like, these DRG, like, A executes have been a bit. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about them so far. They're just lacking something. I feel like when they're executing, it's kind of like this like long period of them trying to get in. Whereas I think with something like Bind, you want to like focus some of your utility to get into these positions. And then you're exploding out with a flash, with a satchel, you know, molly, smokes. With stuff like Brim, you just need to be like, and go. 
and it's just really punchy. Whereas I think for like DERG, they're kind of like climbing through it as much as possible and it's super slow. It's like you're running through mud. I'd say the DRG need a brain. I don't mind you flaming Tyler Wall. You can flame Tyler Wall you want because you're a Tyler fan, and also I'm worse. Like DRG are quite like. I'm just trying to work out like what's going on. Yeah, Tyler were just like in the chokes fighting. Like so far, it's just Aaron and. Zima just doing really good. Zimu, sorry. Zimu. That's it, isn't it? Zimu. I mean, the plants are still coming in mostly for DRG. But I'd like to see a B execute soon. That's brave of a peak. And Flex is still as a judge. Never mind, he's just picked up a rifle. Nice shot. Yeah, Opting in for the attack op is basically saying, I'm not going to do my job. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, but yeah, you got a Seeker, you got a Viper's Pit. Neuro Theft, Seeker's on this side, Viper's Pit on this side, which has just been used in shot. You've got a trip to play around. I'd understand putting um, Zimmer on Zimu, sorry. On like, Silver, if Talu didn't have another good Silver player, but like Aaron's been pretty good for it. Uh, but yeah, that's what um, they've been putting HFMI on, like a scent and such. I put Aaron on Sova, and then HFMI, I'm sure he'll be able to work out how to play Killjoy fairly quickly. But I would just love to have him as a player that, you know, they go for a B execute on Ascent. Interesting strat. Yeah, HFMI runs right into it. And Luke's there with an op, and he brings out the classic to get the kill. Again, this is just like a very lack of foresight. If this was the game plan from the beginning, why would you take the operator into a round where you're going to Viper's Pit out of showers? This is going to get somebody. Yeah, it gets TZH. Suddenly a two versus four. Shion then pushes. That's a bad round from DRG. Full stop. Like, good. Like, this is easy for Tyloo so far. Maybe HFMI not good with Killjoy. Um, yeah, like, I, I can imagine playing Killjoy in a team environment if you're not used to it is a bit of a... But, like, please, I swear, Tyloo. Please, I beg of you. When you're like, maybe you take a break, but like you're scrimming teams in playoffs, you're scrimming teams that go to Shanghai. Any preparation, please, please just put HFMI on Sentinel on all of the maps. This is probably the one where you don't. I would be more than happy to see put HFMI on Sky here. And then put Ice King on Gecko. Because everything else role wise works out masterfully for this team. So please like lean into that as much as you possibly can. Because I swear it's so it's so disheartening, I guess, to see like, teams mess up on rolls. Yeah, I mean, I'm just surprised the DIG haven't tried to do anything else. Like, it's bind. 
I mean, this is the, just the map that I think DRG have been the worst on with kind of like macro attack stuff. Like beforehand, they were just death ball, but like doing that here, DRG have sort of said in the past that like they want to be the team that is like very aggressive, like fights and plays as a team. That's just a bit fucking silly. Who we got winning this? Probably DRG. DRG made playoffs, Tyloo haven't. Tyloo have had some horrific rounds and horrific maps. But uh, I think this is a good choice of map for Tyloo because DRG just... They don't play the big picture stuff very well on attack. On other forms of maps, I think they just try to be aggressive, fight as a death ball and tend to win out that way. But you just can't do that on buy. Not if you're playing like this. You've got all of these trips to worry about. Like, both of them connect. Luke goes down. And it's still up. Interesting call for Aaron to go for the TP. I guess he's like just baiting sound away and they're not going to expect hatred from my hair, but they do pull it anyway. And he's just sending it. Look at him go. Jesus Christ. Man was on a mission. It's like the orb, he felt that that orbital strike was going to follow him across the map. Mm, well played from Tyloo. DRG, you get the first kill. You're gifted a kill right here at the start. And then you go back into doing A executes, which haven't worked. Does Luke translate what the coach says, or does the coach speak both languages? Um, LT, I'm pretty sure, is Russian. And Yu Chen played on a team with Vu, so maybe like his English is pretty solid. Like, if in doubt, nade this. Like, there's a nade that you can do from here, I think, where you throw it and it sort of gets everything around this space. And then if you're still skydogging this, you don't need to worry about it. See, this is prepped for a showstopper already, pretty much. There's the nade, though. Oh, it gets the high one. At least it gets traded. So I guess he maybe has been doing a nade, but the trips have moved off the back of it. Yeah, HFMI is just farming them here. Gets another one. Nice shot from AK. They're getting demolished. I mean, this is, like, solid from Tai Lu. Like, we are seeing the IG make the right adjustments, but they need to just stop going A. Just do something else. Anything else. Because so much focus goes into here that it does, like, it sh the operator shouldn't be allowed to get comfortable in this position. Maybe they're practicing their A hits. So it's very difficult to deal with. And now B has a B. Good round, actually. Like, good call. Really good call. You got spike control. Because naturally, like, DRG would want to go elsewhere. So just Tyloo conditioning them to be like, we're going to fight for this early. Which is going to maybe make DRG feel more like they need to go A. Yeah, Tyloo's kind of dominating here. I didn't do my pickums again this week, annoyingly. I haven't been making the content as such, but I think that's fine. Fukashio is a gun. Shion just as a sheriff. They're going to go in hookah. Oh my god, AK is like, he's hitting his shots. What kind of kills are all of these players on at this point? Also, I don't know if me sitting like that is any good. That's no, fine. Yeah, I really like this. Yeah, I really like this. 
It's kind of like taking like Ice King got punished against the Nico beforehand by pushing this alone. So I kind of like the I did this and I got killed. We do this is free. Uh, AK is 11 and 2 and he's uh, confident enough to be pushing. The wall is annoying, but he's just going to slip onto the other side of it. He missed. He just missed. He maybe should have got that kill, but Xion catches him anyway. <laughs> Four people are stacked over here. Kailu now have actually just gone for the annoying trip down here and then a trip across. Stacking four on A. No cipher trips or anything. You got a show stopper. Uh, Ice King. Be a weird round to be losing, I think. There's the need to break trips that aren't there anymore. I guess that's why you went nade off the rip. Uh, I mean, Luke just gets fucking slapped down. I like the noise cutting away and Vukashu stays to watch the angle. I mean, Tyloo are just... They can't help but peek into it one at a time. You give DRG a little bit of semblance of control and everybody else just starts walking into the guns themselves. Like AK peaking and missing is one thing. Like Ice King just dying here and then just people peaking one after the other is... I don't care if you 7 free up, that's not great. It's a bit silly. That's the title I know. Yeah, that's pretty much in line with what we've been seeing a little bit more. But I guess it's more like Ice King is the IGL. Like, they should know better. And if the if the IGL's one of the first people that's like peeking out and facing, it almost kind of gives permission for everybody else to do it too, you know? Flash here, good camera that sees a little bit of information. Has anybody actually experienced like the new Cypher like cam effect? Because I've been like the games I've been playing in Valorant, I've played up against Cyphers and I've never seen or heard it. Oh, these cages. Camera's still good. I love the change of setup too. And it just forces them for the TP to go A. Molly's good. Good positioning here. I mean, Luke just goes for it. Orbital Strike is about to come in. TZH is dead. Really good position for that too. And now with 13 seconds left, AK is in a great position with the Operator. I'm surprised they didn't go Heaven. Because you had like a player here facing, you had a player here facing. Maybe you want somebody to go up here, but didn't matter. I mean, let's be honest, we all know how DRG feel with this map so far. We've all been up against like annoying ciphers on this map. Sorry, I've tried to like tuck my chair in so I can like sort of sit in this position. But um, there's like a step behind me, so I have to like move my like, chair legs in order to get under it. Uh, Alright though, Talu. They picked this map, DRG picked to attack, and it's been uh, a bit of a disaster class so far. And I'm really impressed with like Tyloo's like how they're playing as a default. And you've got three over on A, you've got the Sky still here, the Rays with an Operator, the Viper and Cypher Utility. HFMI almost to an extent showing that he's over towards A, so they're like, oh the Cypher's on A, that must mean his Utility's on A. Not quite. Maybe having this uh, deep of a trip is a bit bad because the IG and I are like, well, we've seen the cipher over here. We've been hit by a trip in Uka. 
So maybe he was playing on A, but his utility is on B like it is. So I think Nicole, you know, trying to fall on default the operators here. That's something that they need to be careful about. Good wide peek. Is there a nade gun right into this corner? Snake bite is, yeah. Trip's been broken. Luke tries to go in off of it. Xion trades with a sheriff because they don't have anything else for round 12, I guess. Oh, Xion just missing. I don't... Uh, this is, oh my god, it's the attack trip that actually catches people. What a mess of a round. Aaron in a 1 versus 2. Seekers is used. He still has 11 bullets. Good play from Nick. God, that was a mess. It's actually Vukashi doing like an attack trip that got a nice like, bit of info. That actually worked really nicely. Nobody seemed ready though for that. Yeah, nice. Uh, for DRG, considering they won the pistol, 4 8 scoreline is kind of tragic, but it's not, it's not done. Because I could definitely see a world where Talu start to suffer from some of the same things that uh, DRG were doing. Which, yeah, whilst we got this going on, you know, little kiss cams and all that kind of stuff, let's have a look for both these teams on their win rate on bind. The attack side for DRG is their worst, the defensive side is quite good. Pretty much averaging 8 4 half. So, yeah, this could definitely go to overtime. Uh, the only problem is, is like, whilst Tyloo's de defense side is better typically, their attack side is not too shabby either. Like, winning half 7 5. Going over like attack win rates and defensive win rates is always tricky though stats. Just because like you say stuff, oh if their attack win rate is 44%, don't know how much that realistically tells you, you know? Um, but yeah, for bind, DRG have played it twice. Oh yeah, I think one of them was against Tech, where they lost, and then they beat JDG very closely. And then for Tyloo, they lost to EDG, which is very close, still, it was like 13-8, and then they beat uh, Billy Billy, 13-3. So considering how good of a map it looked for Tally right at the start of the stage, I am surprised that they haven't picked it more than they have. DRG is such a random ass team man, 2-0 and Trace getting right by Tally. I think there was more on Trace losing than DRG winning, but I get your point. I think this is just like the worst map for DRG. Like, if I'm DRG, I'm trying to get my Lotus in order and just playing that. Because I think role-wise, it seems to suit the team fairly well. Um, and then I'm bad in bind. Because it just doesn't work for us. Uh, like, on attack, it just doesn't feel like they kind of, like, get how to really get the most out of it. But it's tricky. Palido winning the pistol could be the nail in the coffin if they're not careful, but for a split second, actually, it's a three versus three. Just because of DRG's aggression fighting this early on. Rough peaks, good trades. One all on pistols. Yeah. That's that. Uh, keep me updated still on thingy scores. For um, Pacific, because. If anybody's watching the VOD, we're missing the Pacific, uh, Pacific? Pacific qualifying matches for Shanghai. So I want to know if um, 
Tyloo actually, Tyloo, oh god, Tyloo qualifying for Shanghai, not only is it impossible, it's a nightmare, but um, yeah, like if T1 managed to do the unthinkable to beat Genji. At least Genji would have a second chance, but you're either playing Paper X or DRX for that final spot. Nice shot. TZH, I mean, they're on an eco, so they didn't really have too much to be working with. But he didn't really have anything else going on. He was just on and off angle. Oh, Luke is in here with a frenzy. Four people stacked on B. Xion trying to show some pressure over here. You got a trip in a camera to play off two for Vu. Trip catches one, is broken. Camera gets some information, that's broken too. Yeah, they clear where the Viper is. They should know that the Cypher is around too. Mukashi gets one before he's traded. Oh, and AK just gets one through the smoke too. Uh, Nick's making it expensive. Yeah, these guys have to respect it a bit more. Oh my god. There's no way that he gets flex in there. This has just suddenly got very doable from Nick. Yeah, I mean, there's no time. But he kills everybody on 2 HP on a sheriff. Good god. That's a bit of a... I mean, if Tyloo find a way for this to backfire and DRG come back into this one... Yeah, I'm a little bit... You sort of have to look at this round. Four versus two. And you, well, four versus one, sorry. Nick, 4v1s almost. And, like, yet again, Tyloo can't seem to, like, help themselves from overpeaking. But it's whatever. Like, you don't have a bonus here anymore, Tyloo. You're on a full buy. Okay, one away from the showstopper. Now has the showstopper. Xion just wasn't expecting him to face that aggressively. It's their natural instinct. I mean, AK is 17 and 6. Well, it was 70, 16 and 5 before then, so... I don't blame him for trying to go up and farm... Um, like an orb for the showstopper, because if he had got that kill and then he picked up the orb, he would have had a showstopper for a good bonus. But everything that followed... Like it, was, it was Eren that peaked afterwards... And then it was like flexing and HFMI that were left. And then flexing just getting onto this like pixel angle. Just up as used on attack. Seems to be more just buying time. It's not been thrown out yet. There it is. Uh, Talu going to be winning. Not really the bonus, but this full buy anyway. Good trade as well. Like Aaron fighting, AK trading off of it. 11 4. Yeah, this is just a really good map for Tyloo, it seems. Oh, let's do that. Is this you, Chen? I think it is, right? They do have the little, like, tags on their shirts, which is what I usually look for. Yeah, I just didn't know who was who. 
Because I realized that I never actually looked at their faces. I was looking at their shirts because they have their names on this side of the jerseys. This gets really risky though. Like DRG lose this map, you go to Breeze where you've never seen Tyloo play. I think you just were potentially ask it to be two zeroed. Which, yeah, against Tyloo. DRG making playoffs is good, but I think for DRG, you're not really playing for champions points as such. You're playing more for like good standings in stage two to go for a bit of a run. And DRG just after time on like an eco round again. Shion again, like just trying to contest for showers, but he's doing it alone when the camera is like up here too. I mean, again, low buy, but doesn't inspire. That's the spike. Do they have to go for the TP in order to get it? And now two people have grouped up. Thirty seconds left. There's a shot for one. I mean, yeah, they had to kind of like brute force their way in, and then one's following them. Oh no, not again. Flex has got the spike. Go plant the spike. Go plant the spike. Don't stick around. Uh, Tyloo, that was... That was a little bit silly, wasn't it? Like, you've got people propping up for, like, A pressure here. If you've got the spike, like, if you're going for some sort of play where you're, like, putting pressure towards A to jump for the TP, you don't want to be facing with the spike here, Ice King. These shots were crazy again. I just don't know why they're fighting that. That's like three rounds in a row. Definitely the worst round that we've seen from Tyloo yet. But I'm not trying to to be super rage baity. I don't feel like I have the energy for it today. I think when there's a team that you want to be out stratting and out playing and not trying to out fight, it's DRG. Yeah. Tyler with a really good defensive side. And then they win the pistol. Win the pistol and kind of win the bonus. Xion, please. You're on your own fighting here. AK is last alive. Again, we're like over peaking it a bit. You got the op watching from Luke. And then, like a pixel angle held here from TZH. And they're giving him a lot of respect, which I don't blame him when you've got like a skull line like this. You got like the backsight looking towards lamps, the operator watching across. What is the plan if he tries to plant? You got an aid? Yeah. No time. Yeah, TZH could pick up the up too, so it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, not really been a fan thus far of watching DRG play for showers, though. 
一个特性来解放一些人力，分散到更多的区域里面去。比如说 A 小是拥有比较强防守能力的少尉林，而且 B 场有一把明驹呢，卢克就可以自己玩了。对，卢克就可以随意的去转点，他抽完 B 场之后又可以回到浴室附近。对。而秀恩奇这一回合，他可以专注跟字母哥对枪，不怕被抓。他们的原因也是因为他不用再来回看 A 小了，这也是他们有更多人。Guess it also makes sense for DRG to be wanting to pick Breeze after、um, destroying Trace on it last week. I don't know if you get that kind of、um, like success from it there again. I guess. 打了几回合下来，字母哥这个时候应该会说了，浴室少人，你们只要把 B 场控住，留一个人去看，浴室其实是。I mean, naturally, I think this is just a place of like DRG. 就像他们之前拿分那样。Like they've got playoff sorted. They're playing up against the team. There's nothing to lose. I think it's easy to be complacent, and also, I think for Tyloo, this is a map that you have to look at separately from everything else. Like Tyloo's bind is pretty well drilled. They've had some good results on it, even like against DDG, who also like to pick bind. They like made that map fairly close.、Uh, they destroyed Billy Billy on it too. Yeah, so like DRG are fine. But I think in the grand scheme of things, losing this series is a bit of a problem for making stage two like playoffs for champs. Yeah, Breeze is a good map for DRG. The only risky part is that we've not seen Tyler play it, and then Split. Tyler have been pretty good on it. DRG have been like a lot to be desired. Like this is these are the kind of like pace of rounds that we never saw DRG making. You know, like just getting stingers and just sending it onto a site. Like sure, you have all of the site utility to to watch out for and look out for. But at the same time, you can't just try to、um, like maneuver your way through. F on my internet. No, it should be fine. I'm good. Says I'm still alive. You might need to refresh. Sky flash for long. You got the up pushing down. 对方的空投烟幕里面钻出去。那现在好像对枪的是一个，哎，是一个弗洛辛。Takes a fight, such as up, fine. 直接告诉队友，明狙就在 B 区。我们有 show stopper up to strike Viper's pit. Execute is looking to be the thing coming in. This setup is fine. This is fine. And then you're in a position to maybe like jump for the TP and showstopper if it's an execute. Are you in a position where you can also strike from here as well, TZH? He's tucking in. Yeah. There's a showstopper. Lovely work from HFMI, just biding his time. Great positioning, though, right in the center onto Aaron. HFMI here, though. How aware of it are they? The,、uh, did they just fucking hit him through the wall? Or did he take a fight from somewhere else? Yeah, HFMI is so low. Camera spotted him too. So、didn't know he's there. The fight was flexing. Does flexing have any utility? Doesn't. Oh, but it's stuck anyway. Just, just. Flexing gets him. All right, actually, nice round. Like DRG. I mean, it was expensive ultimate-wise, but. Let's get quick close in time to literally just headshot as well, right for the smoke. Was he seen? No, he's just randomly spraying and got him. Flexing too close to the wall to see the lurk. Yeah, I mean flexing to be fair, like、uh, fair few jobs had the orbital strike, used it maybe early. And then Molly too at that point. So 
Makes sense why, like, if they're doing stuff around here that they might miss little pockets of space. But yeah, DRG have actually made a bit of a comeback here. And it's an eco, so... I mean, the eco runs for Talus so far have been pretty... standard. Yeah, Viper's Pit. Shame that it was used on a round like this, I suppose, but... I guess confirming the rounds is more important than anything else, realistically. Alright, nice and clean for the most part for DRG. I mean, it's flawless, it's just, you know, losing Viper's Pit. Never underestimate Tyloo's ability to throw. Outside of like, um, which round would it have been? Would have been the round 13 for 16. Like 17 onwards, the rounds that DRG have been climbing back with. Not really been that bad from Tyloo. It's just that round that should have got them to 12. It was egregious. Skydog gets no information, but I think it was a little bit early. Right, Luke judging. We've lost Vu, so we've lost a lot of utility. It's going to keep these two players around over on the site for a bit. Crazy how he didn't get one there. Don't overface Nick for the sake of overfacing. You are completely on your own. That's great trade from Flexin. 2v4. How are you playing this post plant? Well, you got Flexin like tucked up into the corner. Defense smoke to sort of cut him off, so that could isolate the fight. But then he smoked off. Aaron gets caught. Xion gets caught by Flexin, two playing backside. And then HFMI sort of playing security for this. Yeah, good fights, good positioning. Good post punt once Tyler got into there. I told you, like... I don't know if you know, Ryan, it's currently one all in Pacific. Uh, what's the third map? Yeah, keep me updated on that game. Breeze. Um, yeah, I think Gen G's been historically pretty good on Breeze, so... I think that should be good. Uh, what's this one? Three chances. Maybe a lot more than they deserved before DRG, but they have a full buy at least. PKS, thank you very much for the five months. Hope you've uh, had a good week. It's really been five months already, Jesus. You know anything about previous JDG coach? Why is it no announcement appears to still be on the roster? Don't know. I mean, it appears to be still on the roster for stuff um, like, uh, like VLR and stuff, which is just behind on info technically anyway. It was alright, how was yours? Yeah, not too bad. It's a bit tiring, but... It's like getting into the fifth week of doing these games in Pacific. Great position from TZH, too. So, yeah. Two. 
。虽然其实上半场他们在自己在进攻方利用这个传送器做 A 点到。Yeah, it was like the Polaris. Um. 但是自己在防守边的时候很。Close qualifiers, wasn't it? And then. 虽然我不用，但是我知道。Yeah, I don't know why there's no official announcement for anything to do with uh val analysis. 完成了这个击杀，就是因为刚才预示的监控掉了，压力很大。其实我感觉天路，天路是不是还可以再叫一个暂停？他还有一个战术暂停。我看一下下一分，这一分可能经济不是特别好。The fact that this goes to overtime being weird. So what do you mean? That's so weird. No. Um. I don't know. Like we, we lack information on a lot of stuff here in the West when it comes to China. Maybe there's like a Weibo announcement. Like I don't know if um Sprite is here. If they know. 天路是准备一个慢推 A 区，慢慢来。最后 ，S King 有追猎之灵在，看看要不要用，或者直接让弗洛星获取一下资源，攒几个终极技能留给。No, I checked. Yeah, I mean. 对，我们看一下这。I guess not. 黑雾能进，因为之前这里有一个障云。Maybe he's still like on the team, but he's like effectively benched. 旁边，霹灵之火帮收音器反把浴室的控制权拿了回来。现在小黑屋这边，毒花鼠已经发现对方进来了，持续的在混，把艾伦打残。Yeah, the only thing is just Val saying that he's back in. Um. 哦 ，The Dodgers win. Uh, one sec. 直接抛成你取气，找人家人的位置，都在小道，全都在小道。那也知道了对方的主要进攻意图，小黑屋。但是随时可能会转哦，所以 B 点的卢克还没有走，他在加 B 二楼。如果你要用传送器过来的话 ，B 二楼一定是第一个来人的地方。卢克现在就等，天哪，你一定要传啊！我这蟒侠就是为你而起的。是的，尤其是队友还都把人打残了。四个人都是一枪往下死，但是天路知道可能有埋伏，啊、还是在一点。这里还有张云的，艾伦打这波看住，再拉出来。Um, 三个人往前顶，顶了出来。Going on? 撞击，你要打打打几个呢？我他一个都没有打掉，因为他被惊喜把他翻了一下。What just happened? Sorry, I thought this round was done and dusted. I just come back and it's. 他也没想到啊，这里来人来的这么快，没想到。Uh, okay. 没有没有任何烟了，弗洛辛一颗烟都。We got E cut after all that. 把这个包下了下来，然后把把人全部解决。We see back here. 不仅天路是十三比十的比分，在自己的主选图员工重镇拿到了胜利，大比分目前一比零领先。而这一张地图，我觉得从上半场以及最后的这一分的表现来说的话， so you have the player advantage. You're up against the Nico. You're just spraying here, stopping the plant with twenty seconds. Vukashi goes down. Hatred from I just peeks out and gets two. 哦 h、oh、my god! What disaster! Let's see the replays real quick. So that's the first kill. Oh, it, it was just good timing, I guess, from like Aaron being here. Aaron just opens this up so much by going lamps. Really good round from him, but yeah, good grief. Ugh. So like, even if DRG win on Breeze, going to split doesn't necessarily look too good for them. Yeah. Told you the Talu game would just be not a waste of time, but it would just go on. Like we're really waiting for like FPX and BLG, right? So, of course, this series just has to keep us in it for a bit longer.